Hello. Today we're going to talk about the uh, unique constraint and uh, kind of what we need to do to handle it. So I'm going to be using PDO here today. You could apply these principles to something else. Uh, you certainly could, but you know I'm using PDO, so this is going to be PDO. There's nothing. This isn't really exclusive. The idea is not about PDO. It's more about uh, unique, which you're going to need at times like this, where I have a form and I'm asking people for their first name, their last name, and their email address. Now, presumably, I'm collecting that email address because I want to send them an email. I can't have two users with the same email because then I don't know who I'm communicating with. The same would be true of something like a username, where there's a username and a password. I can't have two people with the same username because they're going to have different passwords and different accounts and things start to blow up. So there's a lot of reasons why we might need a piece of information that we're collecting from a user to be unique. And so that is a SQL keyword, unique. Uh, I'm going to head over to my code and show you what that looks like a little bit. All right, so I'm not trying to make this a giant project, so I'm just going to show you things. So here's a, here's my connect script. Here's where my SQL looks like for creating my table. I'm a big fan of create table if not exists, uh, as opposed to just manually creating it. I'm just showing you the uh, unique right there. Right, So I'm saying email is unique. You could apply unique to like a username or whatever you wanted, um, but the and so this is appropriate because I, I cannot tolerate two of the same email, but it's going to cause problems because what if someone does enter an identical email? There's a lot of reasons that might happen. Like one is uh, you might have forgotten that you registered. I know I've done that about a million times where I put in my email and it says you already have an account. The other like uh, more common one that you're going to run into as a developer is when you press refresh on the page, it's going to submit that same row again and it's going to blow up because it's not unique. Uh, I'd handle that with a simple query. Now here is where the magic's going to happen. I'm not really trying to talk about processing a form here, but basically I determined that the form was submitted. I get the variables. And right here, I do a prepared statement using PDO. So here's where I build up my query. I use placeholders, prepare the statement, bind, bind the three parameters, and execute. This is going to work the way I want it to work. My name's A. Uh, my last name is also A, my email is A, and I want sweet deals now. And uh, it didn't explode. I'm telling you I know that means it inserted, but that's not really cool that it doesn't say anything. But right, that's kind of the idea of uh, you know giving feedback on a form submission, which you always want to do, whether it goes right or wrong. You could just see this just, it just gets, it gets exponentially longer the more thorough a uh, job I do here, and I'm not trying to be thorough. But here's something that's not fun. I press refresh and explosion because it threw uh, an exception. Uh, integrity constraint violation for key email, right? So when I refreshed, I submitted another insert and it was an identical email. So I'm going to go back to the drawing board and let's uh, try and deal with that a little bit better. All right, so we're getting this exception and uh, that's not a lot of help to our user. This just is kind of a disaster. I mean, if you saw this, this wouldn't be good. Your email, I mean, I don't know what the person using your site would think. I don't think this is very helpful. It's helpful to me. I can see things like uh, SQL state 23,000. So these are kind of error numbers. So, I mean, they mean something to me, but they mean nothing to my user. This is not really what I wanted to happen. It doesn't make sense. Instead, what I want to do is uh, help the user understand what the heck happened and what they can do to fix it. So in the event that you are not happy with the default uh, behavior of an exception, we can use try catch blocks to uh, stop that from happening. So you, what you do is you wrap a try block around the part of your code, which is throwing the exception. And then I'm going to write catch. And then you can say the kind of exception you're looking for. So PDO exception E. And then in here, in this closing set of curly braces, is where I uh, say what I want to happen instead of what happened. So I could do something simple like echo out a bad job, which is silly, but it's better than what I had before. And you see that nonsense up there in the corner. Now, I don't know. I mean, is that better? Yeah, I guess it's better. I also, 
I don't actually want to talk about this, but I will very briefly. This is a ridiculous place to display your output. I'm just doing it here because I'm not trying to make this example any longer than it needs to be. What you would want to do is generate a string and dump it somewhere down on the form with an echo. I mean, there's all kinds of schemes for that. I'm not trying to do that. I'm doing ridiculous things like that. Now, it would be more helpful if you said something like duplicate email. That would be good. So this uh, is like a conditional statement here, which is getting executed because we threw a PDO exception. Now, there's uh, I kind of like to handle this a little differently. So there's different kinds of exceptions. I'm assuming that I got uh, an exception for uh, duplicate email, but I guess there's other exceptions I could have got as well. So what I like to do in here is uh, I'll throw a little I'll throw a little if, and so I'll say if uh, e uh, get code. So you remember that thirty five thousand? Well, I think it's it's twenty three thousand actually. I think. What I'm referencing is, oh, it's gone. But it was there. If you remember that first exception that I said I didn't like how it went. So if you ha uh, violate that unique constraint, you're going to get a code of 23,000. And I can echo out, uh, email already taken. Try another email. Now we're doing a helpful message. I'll show you. I don't know. Get code. I, I don't know. what I did something silly. Oh, get code is a function, so I didn't call it like a function. Email already taken. Try another email. So you see, now I'm helping my user, and, and instead of my uh, application exploding, I am uh, helping my users. And I'm also preserving the integrity of that column, uh, forcing people to do unique stuff. Now, there's a little more to this. Let's do B, B, B. I just want to make sure that I'm not getting a that message all the time, and I'm not. But like I said, I need to be communicating when things go well. Uh, but on that note, in this catch block, I have determined that there is an exception. I looked at one specific case. I'm going to go else, and I'll say echo e, um, oops, e, uh, get mess message. This is also better than I mean, so if some other kind of exception happens, this is like my else block, which is going to catch them all. It's going to give some kind of a message about uh, something helpful. I uh, I don't know how to make that one happen offhand, so I'm just telling you this is going to catch the rest of my exceptions. Now, the other part here is I should let them know that things went well. And at this point, I realize that I'm going beyond the scope of this video. I have the opportunity right now to end this thing at like nine minutes and say that this was pretty short and to the point. And now you know how to use a uh, try catch block in conjunction with uh, unique. So if all you were looking for is kind of sort of how to deal with unique, because unique's a good idea, but as you can see, it requires a little bit of legwork to actually make it helpful, which I think is our obligation. Uh, if I want to do this, make this a little more feedback friendly. Here's a scheme. There's a million schemes. Uh, I'll just create some output string, initialize it to nothing. And then these echoes in these conditional statements, I feel just, I feel bad even writing it. It's more like that is what you should do. Generate a string. And instead of these echoes, these become outs. So if things go bad, I say something about the email being taken. If things go a different direction that I don't expect, they go here. And I guess I'll do a finally block. So this is optional. Uh, a finally is going to get executed either way. And so what I'm going to do here, actually, weird. So I'm going to assume, I'm just making this up as I go, obviously. Uh, I'm going to assume that things are going to go well at the point we're about to execute this statement. Um, if it uh, blows up here, we're going to overwrite that and say someone off the email. If something goes wrong, unexpected, we're going to overwrite it. So you see what I mean? I'm def this is my default message, and I'm going to overwrite it with an error message, or I'm going to echo it out here. Now, when I talk about like uh, displaying output in a good part of your page, this finally block is not going to give us output in a, in a good part of our page. It... Um, this kind of sort of would be uh, an echo down in here. 
if that makes any sense. But let's see how this goes. Uh, finally, finally, what did I, did I, what did I do? Uh, that was a good mistake. I, uh, that was a really good one, actually. That is, that goes with the try catch block, not on the, uh, not on those Fs. This is why you want to comment out those uh, closing curly braces, because otherwise they're just sitting there naked and you don't know what they are. So I have a default, which assumes it's going to go well. If it blows up, I override it. Uh, and regardless of what happens, whether an exception happens or not, that finally is going to get executed. And that's going to give me something like uh, that, which is bad. You know I don't have a C, so let's go Cs. And let's see if I get some positive feedback here. Thanks for registering. Now this solution also, in the world of displaying feedback, you also have to account for the uh, situation where it's the first time to the page, like that. So that's good. Because the first time you haven't had an e the first time you, you visit this page and you haven't submitted the form, you don't have an error message and you don't have a success message either. Like I said, there's not a way to display output, but you should uh, be aware that of the various states of your page. And so we spent all our time talking about what, how to give them an appropriate error message, but we also designed a scheme for giving them a generic error message and uh, what they're going to get when things go well. So sorry for putting an extra five minutes on it. I don't know if that's helpful or not to folks if you're looking at such a specific topic, but uh, I kind of can't help myself, so sorry. All right, so hopefully you are now equipped to use Unique in your queries, and uh, thanks for watching.